Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy. delegation over from Britain to review his work, and I can tell you it's very genuine, very exciting, revolutionary. And it's my pleasure to be able to introduce Stan as a friend and as a scientist who's going to be doing some very important work, and I think you're going to be quite excited about what you hear. Stan? So when you're talking about Tesla's technology, we use an offshoot of Tesla's technology and utilize it in order to provide an answer to the energy problem. Go ahead. So when you're talking about Tesla's technology, we use an offshoot of Tesla's technology and utilize it in order to provide an answer to the energy problem. Go ahead. So when you're talking about Tesla's technology, we use an offshoot of Tesla's technology and utilize it in order to provide an answer to the energy problem. Go ahead. So when you're talking about Tesla's technology, we use an offshoot of Tesla's technology and utilize it in order to provide an answer to the energy problem. Go ahead.
we started embarked on this technology and so therefore we now develop the electron extraction circuit that not only do we cause the electrical polarization process and as we pluck the electrons off of the atoms of the water molecule we pull the electrons out of the water out of the resonant cavity and therefore the byproduct is producing the electricity so you can have self-sustained oscillation in the system now it became important that when we started plucking the electrons and we added laser energy, photon energy to it, we're now bringing the atoms to subcritical state. And once we bring it to subcritical state, we ignite the gases and an enormous amount of energy is released. It's called the hydrogen fracturing technology. Now to understand this, we were talking about in the conference about zero point energy. Now basically the understanding of this is that in law of physics, the atoms reach stable state of equilibrium. The atoms in this podium here is at stable state of equilibrium. It only becomes activated if I take a match and light it and the wood starts to burn to release energy. But under, sta uh, under the laws of physics, st under stable state of equilibrium, the electron moves, uh, and the spin velocity of the electron moves at a constant velocity, and it maintains at a constant spin velocity. But that is illogical because the electron, number one, has mass. It's 1 18th uh, 40th the size of the nucleus. It exhibits an electrical charge. It exhibits an electromagnetic field and it moves to an electric static field. And those force factors that are opposing the spinning uh, of the orbital electron says that eventually that electron would simply slow down and attach itself to the outer walls of the nucleus. But it does not. And therefore, it becomes quite obvious that energy must come into the atom to, stable, to stabilize and maintain the a stable state of equilibrium of the atom. Energy must come in to the atom. Now let me kind of illustrate it in this way. The Lord says to me, we have eyes, but we do not see. We have ears, but we do not hear. What caused the formation of the energy of a hurricane or a tornado? And what causes lightning to be formed in a storm cloud? And what the Lord has shown me is this. Pose several questions. How is it that a fetus in a mother's womb can undergo atomic structuring to give us life? The mother doesn't take in enough food nutrients or enough solar energy to create one atomic structure. How is it that you can take a seed of a plant, put it in the ground and grow a tree 90 foot high? That tree doesn't take in enough nutrients or photon energy from the sun to create one atomic structure. Yet the seed creates atoms, molecules, chemical processes that sustains life. Einstein said if we extend our hands in opposite directions, somewhere along the line our hands would meet. It means that our universe is circular in nature. The red effect in astronomy shows that in fact that our universe is expanding at a fantastic alarming rate. How is mass being created in our universe? Einstein's equation of energy equals mass times the square light showed that the potential of the light was greater than that of the third dimension. That energy is coming into our third dimension in order to create and sustain our lives as we know it. It became quite obvious then that if we would now take the atom and expose it to opposite electrical stress. Now, in the law of physics and science, we know that energy coming into our universe comes to the atomic structure. Now, we know if we hit the atom physically, you're going to release heat energy, right? Like a hammer hitting a nail. We know that uh, Thomas Edison came along and oscillated the atom by way of current flow, and that was the invention of the light bulb. Gould came along and caused the atom to absorb photon energy and re-radiate it, and that was the invention of the laser device. The precursor to that was the maser, where we had learned that we can cause the atom to absorb electromagnetic energy and re-radiate it, and that was the development of telecommunications. You know, when you're at a soccer game or a football game, and all uh, 80,000 plus uh, people are screaming and hollering that the guy made a goal. And you hear this trumpet and the guy goes like that in a trumpet, but it's amplified and you can hear that noise of the trumpet clear across that soccer field when they're screaming 80,000 fans, uh, uh, screaming and very happy that this guy had made a goal. A trumpet in a sound box is actually a amplifier demonstrating that this energy can be tapped into and we see it and it's around us every day now for an example at a hurricane when the temperature varies and the heat starts to rise it starts to vortex 
As it starts the vortex, it now draws in the water moisture into the vortexing air. The air, as it's now swirling, is causing electrical charges, both positive and negative, across the outer side of the vortexing air, and those electrical charges causes the water molecule to flex, and that's what fuels the hurricane and a tornado. The reason why you have lightning form in a rain, uh, at, at a rain front is because when the hot air and the cold air meets together and it starts to rise, the clouds are start to vortexing. They take on opposite electrical charges. It draws the water moisture in between the clouds and flexes the water molecule under particle oscillation as an energy generator by way of electrical stress, and voila, you have lightning. It's all around us. Where is the energy coming through to create the lighting that the fuels the hurricane? If you have the abilities to tap into this zero-point energy, the energy coming into our universe, we have an endless free way of having energy that can bypass the reliability on fossil fuels. It became quite simple when you understand the mechanism that when you put the electrical stress across the atoms of the water molecule, and as the, you elongate the atom, you are now transferring the electrical stress to the component parts inside the nucleus of the atom. Now in the meeting, it was quite evident in a lot of meetings uh, that were here in the symposium that it always referred to the requirement was to tap into nuclear energy. You must have high voltage potentials capabilities to do it. And what actually happens is that all these hundred and so particles inside the nucleus, like the meson, meson particles down to the quarks and even the smaller particles, they are all arranged in a geometric configuration and they are spinning on a vertical axis along with the spinning uh, reference to the electrons. As you put electrical stress onto these spinning particles, if you remember the old steam engine where you had these spinning balls and it would regulate the engine, well the mechanism, naturally, what happens when you spit the water molecule, you flex the atom of the water molecule and as you do it, it will release energy. Now, the way it uh, occurs is that as the electrical stress is applied across these spinning particles inside the nucleus, they slow down. And the native intelligence says, I must have more energy in order to, stable, to stabilize the atom in stable state of equilibrium, and therefore the energy aperture is open. Now you have the quirks, and the quirks are held together by gluons, right? Now what the hell are gluons? Well, they are energy pathways. Hmm? That's right. Therefore, energy is coming into the atom and it's passing through the energy spectrum and it's now being emitted outside of the atom. And so the triggering mechanism is that if you put electrical stress onto that atom, you can cause that spin to slow down. And the native intelligence says that energy aperture will open and more energy will go into that atom in order to try to stay, uh, stabilize stable state of equilibrium. Now, just as our eyes have the ability to see certain frequencies of energy, uh, doesn't say that there are not other frequencies and energies that are available. Now, we invented the infrared lens and the ultraviolet lenses to detect those frequencies of energy, have we not? It does not say that there are not other energy sources that are available. Here's an example that Mike, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Pappas has shown that the energy being emitted through the nucleus to the outer uh, energy spectrum of the atom is a directional force because the potential energy coming into our third dimension to create our universe as we know it. It has native intelligence to create our mass. Uh, it has the abilities to create and sustain our life form. And that energy potential is a one-way, so it's a one-way gate valve. Now we come to the point that as you expose the atoms of the water molecule under electrical stress, you are now starting to oscillate the atom under electrical stress. So unlike Gould, and, and, and the others, we are now applying electrical stress of opposite polarity across the atoms of the water molecule to cause particle oscillation as an energy generator by way of electrical stress. So now we are causing the hydrogen and oxygen atom to increase in energy, that every time you will pulse it under enormous electrical stress, it adds more energy into the hydrogen and oxygen atom. Once you terminate the electrical stress pulse, it now shuts off the flow of energy into the atoms, and then that energy is now available to be utilized as work. So basically what's happening, the more you will oscillate the combustible gas atoms under electrical stress, more and more and more and more energy is going in to the combustible gas atoms. 
you now, anywhere along that line, can light the gas and release this enormous amount of energy that's available to us at a zero point energy, and we now have a way to power our trains, planes, boats, and any other form of uh, device uh, that we have in our economy. We now take it, this is an example that not only we're energy primitive, we can now pluck the electrons to destabilize the mass, open up the energy aperture even further, and now release even more energy. Now, a classic example of this on a thermonuclear nuclear device, there's not enough energy in an atom to blow up anything. And you can prove this out very simple by taking an electron and pass it through a resistor, and you'll get X1, X amount of heat. A uh, proton is 1,840 times greater than that of electron, so if I would pass it through the resistor in the opposite polarity attraction force, you'll find out you get 1,840 times more heat out of it. Where is there enough energy in an atom to blow uh, and destroy New York City? What actually happens in uranium 235 and 238, so you have the clustering of the protons, which allows the clustering now of the energy apertures. And then when you blow the atom apart by a neutron bombardment, it actually destroys and rips open this energy aperture in a very violent way. And this is the energy that it really is releasing into our environment under that hostile environment that will blow up the city. What we're actually doing is taking a very natural phenomenon that occurs in thermal gas ignition, and we're simply enhancing its control and releasing it to the energy level that we so desire. Now we get to the hydrogen fracturing uh, point of the technology. This is where we take the atoms, uh, the uh, water molecule, we take it in subcritical state, uh, we pluck off their electrons, we add photon energy in it to take it to a very high stable state, and we are now duplicating the muon process that had been very successfully demonstrated in universities uh, in this country, where they would take a muon and trick the hydrogen atom, and accept the muon, eject its natural electron, the muon would decay in a millionth of a second, there was a readjustment within the, the nucleus of the atom and says, oh, I don't have an electron anymore, I must release energy. And so when it tries to stabilize, it flexes and releases this enormous amount of energy coming through our, uh, our atom structure. Here is where we're taking and, and uh, causing uh, at least four to five electrons to come out of the oxygen atom. Uh, normally, when an atom has at least 50% of its electrons missing, it acts like a little baby and it blows apart. In this particular case, what we're doing is exposing the hydrogen atom to photon energy. It absorbs it and it causes the, their electrons to migrate farther away from the nucleus. Its electric attraction force becomes weakened, whereas the oxygen atom is eight times bigger. And so when you take it on a gas ignition, you have, and as the unlike atoms try to come together to form the water molecule, it has an avalanche effect, mass density occurs, an enormous amount of energy is being released. Okay, we've done all this wonderful research in using water as fuel, but if you can't system engineer it, it doesn't mean anything, right? So you're finding out a lot of talks in the symposium. This has been confirmed now in many, many governmental and university laboratories around the world. This is where we're now taking the water molecule, uh, meter mixing it and exposing it between two high voltage. The zones of opposite polarity shut off the uh, current of flow around 40 kilovolts or, or higher, and we now instantly convert water into thermal explosive energy. Now, this device does not create energy. The only thing we're doing is utilizing the energy, energy that's already there in the atom. It's a triggering process, so it's like a thermonuclear process, but this one here is under a control state. oxygen ionized electric generator. However, I would have to say that this is one difficult guy, but I will not give up. He is going to work. This is the farthest I have ever gotten as of now. So, as you can, as you can see right here, this is a little generator that I am using. Actually, transformer. I am using that travels all the way 
of it is that guy right there. And this is the ground line. He goes right over here. Inside are the spark conduits. Standard sleeves you can get from the hardware store. Now, as you can see, the fan is on. That air blows up into the contacts, and the contacts have a plasma that go to these collector plates right here. And these collector plates go right over to this capacitor bank. Now, as you can see, this is the design of the capacitor bank. So, without further ado, engage in test. Now, since I'm working with cold electricity, hot electric conventions are not going to work. No, oh, sorry, lost my light on this. So you can, so you people can barely even see it. What it is? It's just 20 millivolts. show. And, oh. Now, according to me, the air feels rarefied right now. And because of this little guy right here, I don't know if he can charge anything. <laughs> Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need of coal, oil, gas, or any other fuel. This new power for the driving of the world's machinery 
will be derived from the energy which operates the universe, the cosmic energy. So uh, just as uh, Job 38 verse 22 and 23 said, the technology will come out of a time of great trouble and therefore we will be faced with a tremendous catastrophic event if an alternative energy source cannot get into the economies of the world. So I've been based in working on the technology on the Department of Authority Word of God since that premise in order to bring this type of technology forward. So whether it's water fuel cell or any other form of technology, give these men a hand to come up and say, gentlemen, I have a way that perhaps we can solve the energy problem inherently also solve the environmental pollution problem. It's going to be you that's going to determine whether we're going to survive or not, not Stan Myers. So I've been working on this premise since 1975. Thank you.